got the resume, a couple of Super Bowls, three-time Pro Bowl. They got the win last night. It was a little, a little tight, for, actually a little harrowing for a while before they came back and they pulled it out. But we're talking about the Saints, uh, one of their terrific defensive players, Malcolm Jenkins, who's with us here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Malcolm, what's happening, man? How are you? I'm doing well. How you guys doing? Doing well. Thanks yeah. for hopping on, Yeah, bud. we can't complain. Um, you guys can't either. Getting a, another tough win um, against the surprisingly really good Chargers with a rookie quarterback. What did you think about Justin uh, Herbert and his, I guess it's now his third start. What did you think about him? Yeah, I was impressed, man. I think, you know, the two things I always look for in young quarterbacks is how do they deal with, you know, pressure. Like when you when you blitz them, how do they deal with that? And then how uh, how well do they take care of the football? And I think you know he he does both really well. Obviously, he's a big quarterback. He's mobile. Uh, they run a little bit. You know, it can run a pro style offense, and then they start running you know zone reads and quarterback keeps and things like that. But you know, he stepped up, and even when we did hit him, he didn't get rattled. Still made a bunch of you know throws that were. I thought some really good throws, um, and he took care of the football. And so that's always a winning formula for a quarterback, and, and it's, you know, usually surprising when you see that from a rookie. Yeah, you you don't usually see that from rookie, which is why you usually, like, come after him. <laughs> you, you blitz yep. these young kids. And I got to wonder, you know, I mean, it's on him because he's he's played some really good teams over his first you know three starts. He only have one win, obviously, or first four starts, I should say. He's only got one win. Um, but you know when you go after a young quarterback and he responds the way that that, that he that he did to you guys, does that catch you off guard? Because I wonder. I mean, there were three quick touchdowns or two quick touchdowns, and then the third one later that he looked like a pro. Man, it, it didn't seem like he was just stepping into the to the to the NFL level. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I wasn't surprised. Honestly, it's what I've seen on tape. You know, I I, I didn't see him flinching when they were uh, pressuring him in any of these other games. I saw him make big plays down the field, big arm, you know, against Tampa. Yep. Um, and so you see, you know, these things, these, these tells that, you know, he, he's fine. <laughs> like, this game doesn't rattle him. You know, the pressure doesn't rattle him. And, again, he takes – really good care of the football, which is the main, you know, part. I think that's the hardest thing for young quarterbacks to, to understand. The only thing I saw on film, you know, that I was a little bit, uh, or, or as a defender, you get excited about, but as his teammates, I'm pretty sure I'd be con concerned is this, you know, he, he doesn't fly much. Yes. And so he takes a lot of hits. And uh, whenever you're talking about a franchise quarterback, or somebody who you're depending on, you don't want them taking too many hits. Yeah, but you'd but rather defender, have to. I'm yeah, sorry, Malcolm. You're excited ahead. about it, but that's the only that's the only thing I can yeah, knock I have. But he, I, I was impressed. No, I got you, and and I'm sure you, you both you guys would agree as former players. I mean, you'd rather have uh, a guy who's not afraid to lower the pads and kind of coach that out of him because it shows the toughness and all that stuff, rather than a guy who's. You know, it was, nobody's a wimp in the NFL. Certainly wouldn't imply that. You're playing in the NFL, you have some toughness to you. But you know what I mean. There's certain quarterbacks who are just not as tough as others. And I, I, I would think that you'd rather have a guy that, um, after all, gets it and learns to slide, but he's got that youthful energy and he's not afraid to lower the pads and try to pop somebody, right? No, I don't need that out of a quarterback. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not well, at all. We, we not really? At all. We've seen what it's done. Like, think about Carson Wentz. And, yeah. You, you mean, really? Unless you're Lamar Jackson. <laughs> wow. Right, yeah, if you're fast all right. and not get hit, yeah. I mean, okay. I don't want my quarterback taking hits. All right. Well, so hopefully your quarterback doesn't take hits because he might break in half. We're not even going to speak that into existence. <laughs> of course not. I would rebuke that right now. Now, listen. <laughs> now, listen. Drew is, Drew is an all-time great human being and an all-time yeah. great quarterback. We know that. We're talking about yeah. from Jenkins, by the way. Um, but, listen, I would be disingenuous if I didn't present to you what I presented to, to our audience. Now, I'm sure you'll refute this, and, and I'll respect it, but – He's not the same guy, man. I mean, I, I, I look at the Saints offense, Malcolm, and it's, you know, last night, the first six possessions, three, four, ply, five plays, punt, pick, punt, 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 field goal. Uh, and I know that Michael Thomas is in there, but I just don't see the same quarterback. No crime in that. He's 41. Is he still good enough to win the Super Bowl is what I'm asking. I'm worried. You tell me that I'm nuts. So, uh, well, I think there's a lot of, a lot of um, games to, that will – you know, either prove you right or prove you wrong mm -hmm. uh, between now and the Super Bowl. I think Drew Brees is more than capable enough to win against any team in this league. 
Um, is he getting older? For sure. <laughs> and I don't think anybody on this team right now, maybe besides Alvin Kamara, is, is really um, thinking that they're playing their best ball right now. I think as a team, there are a lot of things that we need to get better at. Uh, last night was definitely a slow start, but I think the Drew Brees you saw on the back half of that game that led us down the field, um, you know, on, on back-to-back drives to get us in position to win, you know, he's more than capable of, of leading us to where we need to go as a team. Yeah, no, I think that's that, that that's without question. It's just a matter of how long he can do it. Um, we also started the show, uh, Malcolm, talking about Michael Thomas, your embattled wide receiver, it seems like. We don't know all the details, and I'm not going to expect you to comment on it. But Sean Payton. Maybe you will. Um, maybe you will. But I mean, I just, it's more about just the the implications. Sean Payton, you know, took a definitive action. Easily could have just said, um, um, you know, Michael Thomas is out because his ankle is still acting up. He deactivated him because of a fight that apparently took place. Um, one, did Sean handle that the right way? And I guess more importantly, in the locker room, how was it received and how was Michael being received after that? Well, I think all of that stuff, you know, is obviously was, was handled and, and needed to be addressed. Um, I think everybody's on, on board with uh, Sean Payton's decision, but I also uh, I, I don't think there's any ill feelings or anything towards Mike. We we know for us to get to where we need to be as a team, we're, we need Michael Thomas on the field. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he knows that, you know, in, in being accountable to his teammates. Um, but, you know, sometimes things come up and, and they need to be addressed. Uh, we are not immune to that, and I think you know, we'll do a good job of hands on that um, as we move forward. But as a teammate, as a teammate, are there things, like, because the way it was presented, Malcolm, it's that, I don't know, breach of trust, that might be a little bit too strong, but are there things that he needs to show the team that he's still all in? No, I don't, I mean, not from my seat. I think everybody knows, you know, that we are um, all highly competitive athletes, and Michael is one of those guys who is always, you know, on edge and plays, <laughs> you know, with that, that chip on the shoulder. Um, but I think all of us need to also understand, you know, where those lines are that we can't cross. And, you know, for us, we've counted on them before. So one one mistake doesn't doesn't change how we feel about uh, our teammates. We know where his heart is. We know he wants to um, – he's a huge part of his team and wants to be part of the reason that we have success, um, and he will be. Yeah, no, and Michael, it's interesting. It's in- uh, uh, Malcolm, it's interesting when you talk about Michael because with him and Drew um, uh, and Alvin K- uh, Kamara, who you just mentioned, the defenses side of the ball, which has done so well, I mean, we've been talking about the Saints for the last three years. This team is it's viable. It should have a shot at the at the at the, at the Super Bowl at a at a, at a title. Um, but are you guys starting to feel an urgency? I mean, obviously you have your you got one in, in Philly, but are you guys starting to feel an urgency because that window would. Drew Drew is closing, and you never know what's going to happen with really anybody in any season. Are you guys feeling an urgency? Yeah, I think there's there's definitely an urgency to to have been as close as this team has been in the last you know three seasons to win as many games as they as they won, but not um, have gotten to the one that actually counts. I mm-hmm. think um, haunts everybody. And, and when you look at our roster, you look at the guys that we have in the room. You, you recognize that you have an opportunity. Um, but that's all it is, is an opportunity unless you, you take full advantage of it. So I think there's an, there is um, an urgency for us to, uh, to win games. But that urgency can't, you know, can't change the process. We've never been a team that focuses all the way, you know, to the Super Bowl in week four or five. We, we take it one game at a time stack up as many wins as you can, um, and then eventually you'll get to your goal. So our, our biggest thing right now, the focus and the urgency, is how do we improve from week to week? And there's a lot of things that we need to improve on uh, as a team. And so that's really where the urgency is, how do we attack each week. So we're talking to Malcolm Jenkins, and we know you're doing some stuff with Old Spice. We'll certainly talk about that in a minute. I, I do think that the, the NFL fans would love to hear – uh, a guy who's respected, a guy who's been around, you know, 12 years like you have, multiple Super Bowls, a couple of Pro Bowls as well. Uh, wh- what have you seen? Uh, we hope that he doesn't play because that means that something happened to Drew. But behind the scenes, 
Jameis Winston. I'll call it the rehabilitation of Jameis <laughs> Winston. We both like him. Yeah. We think he's got a great personality. You know, he's an affable young man. He's got to tighten up some mechanical things, or at least how we, what he thinks he can do. But his talent's undeniable. Um, is is he just kind of chilling and coasting, or do you sense that he's really tr- using this this time with Drew and and with Coach Payton? So when he's unleashed next year, wherever it might be, he's going to be a flat-out bowler. What are you seeing from Jameis? I mean, right now, I see a guy that's fully committed to his role on the team right now. Uh, so whether that's, you know, if that's our backup quarterback and he's taking scout team reps, you know, he's trying to make us better as a defense, um, you know, and continuing to develop. I see somebody com- com- uh, committed to uh, really developing his own skills and putting in the work after practice. And kind of having this this idea that when his opportunity comes, whenever that is, that he'll be ready. Uh, but I also see somebody who's still contributing, you know, as a leader. He hasn't let this moment, you know, where he went from being, you know, top draft pick to starting quarterback leader to now being, you know, further down on the roster. He's still very vocal. He's still the biggest hype man we got on the team. He's, you know, encouraging, you know, his, his teammates and very, very engaged. And I think that's, that's something that, to me, uh, I have a lot of respect for because, you know, I've seen many players who aren't happy with their role or aren't happy where they are, um, you know, really take that into a negative direction. But, yeah. man, he's a positive a positive um, personality in our locker room. And nice. definitely, definitely happy to have him. Yeah, good. No, we no, like him. We yeah. like him, right? I right, take you and I yeah, both like no, him a lot. That's good to hear. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.